G'day traders, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm gonna be building on the previous YouTube video where we built out a Bitcoin regime filter strategy. And in this video, I'm going to share with you an answer to a student question from the mastery course. The student wants to know how to pyramid multiple trades in a single strategy. So opening multiple positions in the same direction as an initial position. They also wanted an example of how to use a trailing stop loss. Well, this script does both of those things. And so I thought I might just share this answer with you guys, because I'm sure there's plenty of you out there who would like to know how to pyramid trades in a strategy script. So with that intro out of the way, it's time to let you know about this video's sponsor, which is you guys. <laughs> I don't have any sponsors. Uh, just hit the subscribe button, hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Uh, that's all the sponsorship I need. Thanks for watching, enjoy the video, and I'll speak with you next week. In this lesson, I'm going to be answering another student question, which is, could you please do a video on the strategy section with pyramiding more than one trade at a time, as well as an example of changing a stop or trailing? I'm not sure how to do this. Well, today I will show you how to do both. I've already uh, covered how to do a trailing stop um, in several of the scripts here. And in the indicators section, there is a ATR trailing stop tool lesson. So go and check them out if you're not sure how to go about creating a trailing stop. But in today's lesson, I'm going to be building on the previous strategy lesson I released recently, my Bitcoin regime filter strategy. This strategy includes a trailing stop. And what I'm going to do in this lesson is we're going to add pyramiding to this strategy. So if I come down to the source code and copy all of this, jump over to the Pine editor. So here we are with the script applied to my chart. Now I'm not going to explain how this script works because I've already done a lesson on this script, but basically if you haven't watched that lesson yet, what this does is it checks if price, in this case, Bitcoin, if Bitcoin is trading above its 20 week EMA and we have several other price conditions being met. In other words, this regime ribbon color down here is green. When this turns green, if we are not involved in a trade, uh, the script enters long, but it only trades one position with a trailing stop. As you can see, that's what our red line is. And when price closes below that trailing stop, we exit our position. So a couple of things I want to do here. The first thing I'm going to do is change my inputs. I'm going to change the date to start trading at 2017. That just gives a slightly more accurate or more realistic results because I don't, I doubt many of us have been trading Bitcoin since its inception, uh, but I started in 2017. So I'm going to do that to start with. I'll also turn on our RSI momentum filter. That simplifies the script a little bit instead of having so much green and orange. Now, the only time the ribbon turns green is if Bitcoin is trading above 70 RSI. So momentum must be strong. Now, Let's modify the script to allow for pyramiding. So to start with, I'm going to add two new user inputs to the script. I'm going to add a pyramid option. This will just be a uh, bool, boolean option on off. I'll just call it pyramid question mark and the default value will be false. Next, I'm going to set an amount that uh, Bitcoin or any whatever market we're trading must rise from our first entry before we are allowed to pyramid. I don't want a pyramid immediately just because this is still green. Uh, I want to only pyramid when price has moved into my favor by a decent margin. So by default, let's make it 10%. So the market must rise 10% before we are permitting the script to enter a second pyramid long position. To do that, I'll create another input here called pyramid AMT, short for amount. This will be a float input and I'll title it pyramid after X percent rise. And the default value will be 10%. Save that script. And that gives us our two user inputs to start pyramiding. Let's scroll down to where the script enters our positions. First of all, here is our trailing stop code. All of our trailing stop code is handled here. Uh, we declare it up here. And in fact, I can change this code a little bit. This will reset the trailing stop whenever a new position is entered. Um, I can move this to where our exit happens. So when our script exits our open trades, so when the closing price is below our trailing stop or below the 20 week EMA, uh, but this is our trailing stop code here. You don't need this if you don't want it. If the closing price is below our trailing stop, we exit our position. Now, if you wanted to use an actual trailing stop that exits the trade when price touches that trailing stop rather than closes below it, you need to input this trail stop into the strategy.exit function. 
And what you would do is you would put in all of the regular parameters. So ID equals exit from entry equals buy. We want to exit our buy trade and you would need to put in stop equals trail stop. And that would exit your trade whenever price touches this red line. But for today's lesson, I'm going to leave it as it was. So we're only going to exit our trades when price closes below that red line. And when that happens, we will reset our trailing stop. Our red line here will be set to NA or nothing, and it won't draw again until we enter a new position. And once we enter a new position, this code gets executed and we start updating our trailing stop to lock in more profit. So let me save the code, make sure there's no problems there. There we go, everything's working just fine. Bring this to the front as well. So now there's several ways we can pyramid this script. We could just get rid of this check here. That would just enable pyramiding. That's all you need to do is just not check if a position is open. Uh, there's a little bit more to it, but that's essentially what we need to do in order to allow the script to take multiple entries. And then what you would do is you can control your pyramiding here in the properties settings of the strategy script. Uh, but we'll get to this in a moment. For now, what I'm going to do is rather than change this code, I'm gonna add a second entry block of code. And this will uh, be called handle scale in pyramiding. So this form of pyramiding is scaling into a trend following position essentially, or momentum system, whatever you wanna call it. We are trading with momentum and we're only pyramiding while price is moving into our favor. Um, you could make a DCA, a dollar cost averaging system that pyramids as price moves lower. I personally, that's not how I like to trade, but it is possible to do that in Pine. All of these techniques should work no matter how you wanna trade. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to check if our strategy dot position size is greater than zero, that means we have a long trade open and our date filter is met. So we are trading within uh, this start time and end time. Then we are going to check if we should pyramid. So what I'm going to do here is declare a new variable called dist, short for distance. And this will be set to the current bars closing price minus our entry price. So to get the entry price, I will just use the entry average price divided by our entry price. This will give us the distance price has moved from our entry as a percentage. So for example, if I minimize this and look at this trade here, if I scale up 10% here, this bar here is the first bar to exceed our entry price by 10%, which is our default pyramid amount. So on this bar here, when we enable pyramiding, this will uh, be the first bar to enter a new position um, and we'd start stacking long trades on top of each other in the same direction, utilizing the same trailing stop as well. So to do this, I need to check if we are bullish. So first of all, are our regular entry conditions met? So the market is bullish, we're trading above the 20 week EMA and our filters are met. So um, our RSI momentum filter is met or we're not using the RSI momentum filter. If either of those conditions are true, either this is turned off or the current RSI value is above this, then we are bullish and we want to not trade when the script is in caution mode. Caution mode means that volatility is picked up. See this orange bar here, orange colored thing. That's saying that the current bars low is greater than 1.5 times the ATR from the recent swing high. So when price action drops greater than one and a half ATR from the recent swing high, it happens again here, uh, that means volatility is picking up to the downside and we wanna go into defense mode. And what happens is uh, the script raises the stop loss even higher to lock in more profit. It's more aggressive with its protection when the market uh, turns to caution mode. When, or um, in other words, when momentum is waning, we tighten our stop loss. That's what these two conditions will do. Finally, we just need to check, and is the distance on the current bar's closing price from our entry price greater than this percentage? To do that, we just check, is dist greater than or equal to our pyramid amount input divided by 100? Now, if you wanted to, you could just change this to 0.1 and not divide it by 100, and that would give us 10%. But to make it more intuitive, uh, I'm gonna go with a whole number here. So 10%, to get 10%, we need to divide 10 by 100. That will give us our distance as a decimal. So 
1.0 would be 100%, 0.1 would be 10%. So if dist is greater than or equal to 0 0.1, uh, then we want to enter a new position. Now, this is where things can get as complicated as you want them to be. For today's lesson, I'm just going to keep it simple and I'm just going to keep my buy ID the same as this buy ID. And what that will do is uh, when our trailing stop is triggered, this call here will exit all open trades that have this buy ID. If I wanted to have a different exit reason for each pyramided trade, I would need to change this ID to something unique and change or add a new strategy.close call for that second pyramided trade. But just for now, I'm gonna keep this the same as this initial entry. And all we need to do now is set the direction. So the direction will be the same as this one, strategy.long. And now when I save my code, hopefully it compiles. There we go, it's fine. But it's not doing anything. It's not taking any extra trades. That's because we now need to come up into the settings menu, click on properties and increase our pyramiding um, max limit. So this is the maximum amount of open trades we can have in any given direction. So in this case, this script only trades to the long side, to the upside. We are only allowing one position at a time and we are investing 100% of our account balance into each, each trade. What we need to do in order to enable pyramiding is increase this number, but unless we are using leverage, we cannot invest 100% of our account balance into two trades. If you're using leverage, I could increase this to whatever I wanted, so 100% margin for long positions. I believe this allows me to open twice as much as, as my account balance. I'd have to double check that. I don't use margin in my backtesting uh, on TradingView, but we can perhaps cover that in a future lesson. But for now, I'm gonna leave that at zero. And what I need to do, since I'm not using leverage in this backtest, is I need to reduce this, my order size, since I'm using a percentage of my equity, I need to reduce this so that it reaches 100% when we're fully invested. If it exceeds 100%, then that's unrealistic. We can't actually open that many positions. Um, one way around this would be to change this to contracts, uh, or let's change it to US Tether and set this to uh, five, uh, let's set 1000 and set pyramiding to 10. So now we can open up to 10 trades in our long direction uh, while we are trading up. As soon as our stop loss is hit, is triggered as it is here, all of these open trades get closed at the same time. I'm not going to cover multiple exit reasons in this script because that will just get too complicated. Hopefully by now with the amount of content in the mastery course and all the different examples, you should be able to build a pyramiding script as complex as you like by just building on the examples in the course. All you need to do is either create a second entry block of code for your pyramiding that does not check if the strategy.position size is equal to zero or simply get rid of this and control your pyramiding through the properties tab here. So because we're only investing a thousand USD or US Tether in this case, stable coin um, in each trade, and we have a starting balance of 10,000, um, let's drop this a little bit lower. Let's drop it to 500. We should be, unless we take a massive loss early on in the script and we lose most of our account balance, we should be able to open 10 positions worth 500 US Tether each quite easily. But if we're using percentage of equity, we need to set this to whatever adds up to 100% based on how many positions we are allowing the script to open. So if I change this to four, now I need to set my order size to 25%. So each time we open a new position, we will increase our position size by 25% of our account balance. Now, but click okay. Now you can see we are opening one, two, three, four trades in the long direction before the script stops taking new trades and we wait until our trailing stop is hit. And now this will affect the performance. It will, um, in this case, it reduces the drawdown significantly, but also reduces our profit since we're not fully invested early on in the, in the uh, trend. Um, so that's one pro and con with pyramiding is it can increase your profitability in some cases, but more often than not, it will uh, reduce your volatility by reducing your profit a bit, but also reducing your max drawdown, which is depending on how you like to trade, how conservative you are, maybe this is more important to you than maximizing your profit. If I turn pyramiding off, you see our drawdown more than doubles, but our profit is significantly more. So again, just a matter of preference and how you like to trade, but this is how you enable pyramiding. Anyway, that will about do it for this lesson. Just before I wrap it up, I'll show you really quickly how to 
have two separate exit reasons for your pyramided trades. Let's change this to buy two. This is our ID for our pyramiding entries. And let's add a new exit reason down here called strategy.exit. I'll give it an ID of pyramid exit. And we are going to exit from the entry ID of buy two, which is our second buy trade here. And what I'll do here is I will pass in our stop equals trail stop. And now when I click save, what this should do theoretically is when I enable pyramiding here, so if I set this to 50% and set pyramiding to two contracts or two trades, now you can see we have two exits. So we're entering our first long trade, then we're pyramiding our second long trade, and then our first long trade exits when price closes below our trailing stop, but our second buy trade, our pyramid trade, exits when the trailing stop is hit by price action. So that gives us two exits here, and we are controlling the exit reasons for our two pyramided trades. Uh, here you can see we entered long on this trade here. Our first buy was open, but we never got a second trade opening. And so when price closed just below this red line here, we exited this trade, but we never had a second position open. But yeah, here we have a second position open. It gets stopped out, but our original position continues trading. And in fact, we open a second pyramid position. So here is a good example of of how complex things can get when you start pyramiding. You need to track, obviously, a lot of moving parts. But what we have here is we have our initial trade opening. Price moves up by at least 10%. We open our second pyramiding trade. Our trailing stop keeps rising to lock in profit. Then here, price uh, triggers our trailing stop and exits our pyramid trade on this red line. But then price does not close below the red line and doesn't exit our position entirely. And in fact, it reverses, keeps trading higher. Now we're obviously trading well above 10% from our entry. Our ribbon is green, so our market is bullish. The script is allowed to maximum open trades. And so here we open, reopen our second pyramid trade. And again, that pyramid trade gets stopped out here for a microscopic profit. And then price closes below our trailing stop. Uh, you can't see it here, but it would have risen slightly on this bar here. And we get closed below and we exit our entire position here. And that actually increased our profitability a little bit, but it also doubled our drawdown. So a lot of things to consider here. Um, obviously, this is not trading advice. This is not investment advice. It's just pure example. I'll leave the source code below for you to play around with. What I'll do is I'll comment this out and I'll comment that out and I'll just leave the original code in there and I'll leave that as it is and you guys can play around with this if you want to. A couple of examples there. I hope you found this interesting and most importantly, valuable in your trading process, your coding process. And uh, yeah, I'll speak with you in the next lesson. Take care and good luck with your trading.